guys today. You're going to be hearing a lot this weekend about telling the story, about the principles. And when I saw, I wasn't even really sure what I was going to be talking about until I saw on the agenda. It said I was talking about cash. And I'm like, it's a philosophy thing. I'm supposed to talk cash. How does that work? So I'm going to talk about some philosophies that we go into running a practice. I think it's important that when we're out in the field that we're not just telling the story, but we're telling our story, how we got into chiropractic, how it's impacted our lives. It usually takes me about two minutes to get over my nerves. Even though I do this a million times, I get, still get butterflies every time I get up here. Thanks, appreciate it. I think I was born a chiropreneur, you know? I think I was born that way. I can still remember being that kid in elementary school bringing cinnamon sticks to sell to all the other kids. <laughs> and I can still remember 10 years old walking around my neighborhood with a wagon full of avocados from our backyard in Miami, Florida, selling them to the neighbors. And I could still smell the grass from all the lawns I mowed as a kid. In fact, today when I feel stressed, I often say, gosh, I would really like to just go mow some lawns. It'd be so much easier in life sometimes. I sometimes wonder how I ended up going to engineering school with all this experience of selling to people and sharing and being an entrepreneur. But then I think back to my high school days, and there was that one teacher that believed in me. Have you ever had that teacher in your life? Miss Brenneman, when I was in ninth grade, saw I had a talent for art, and she saw I had a talent for the computer. And she saw something in me that fostered an interest in me that I think ultimately led to me studying electrical engineering. But what blows me away is when I was in college studying engineering, I also was exploring the ability to get moms to spend a lot of money on their kids in a surf shop. Because I worked in a surf shop and it was my first taste of selling for someone else and working with people. And it was through this whole process of experiencing doing things for other people and helping them and seeing the smiles on their face that made me wake up the senior year of an electrical engineering program realizing, I think I'm living someone else's dream. Have you ever felt that in your life, that you're living someone else's purpose? Raise your hand if you've ever experienced that. It's not a good feeling, especially when you've invested so much in it. So I did something that was very interesting. I shared this story with Dave Jackson a number of years ago, and I, share it, I, I didn't share it very often before that, but after I shared it with him, he said it was such an important thing to talk about that ever since then, I make it a point to share it now. I went to the beach, left class, went to the beach and cleared my mind surfing. I'm a, I've been an avid surfer for 25 years. And then after I got out of the water and cleared my mind, I took out a pad, pen, and started writing a story. Who am I going to be when I grow up? No one told me to do this. It just felt natural to say, I've got to figure out my life. I was lost, confused. And when I did that, it did something very interesting to me. It gave me a new vision in life. Suddenly, I saw clearly as if the world looked a little different. It was as if I put on a pink pair of glasses. Have you ever experienced that suddenly you have an idea and something shifts in you and things look different? Well, with this new pair of rose-colored glasses on, I was visiting my chiropractor. Now, I had started chiropractic when I was 12 years old. My first experience with it was pain. I injured my neck jumping into a pool, and I was in upstate New York visiting family, and after suffering for weeks with pain, my family took me to a chiropractor in Miami, Florida, where I, which is where I was. And then I'd visited a chiropractor every so often throughout my life, but I'd never really heard the principle, per se. No one ever really sat down and taught me this stuff. I was just going because it kept me active. It kept me functioning. I was surfing a lot and all these activities. But suddenly, I was in his office with this rose pair of gla these rose gla colored glasses, blah, blah, blah. And the world looked different in his office. What he was doing spoke to me like it's never spoken before. And it lit something inside of me say, hey, I could see myself doing what he's doing. He's helping people. They respect him. They seem to love what he does. And they're so happy. Hmm, I should check that out. So I went to the school where I was going. I was going to San Diego State University. I checked out a medical book. And in that medical book, I read something about chiropractic. And I, I can't remember the name of the book. It drives me nuts that I can't remember. But in that book, I read something that went something like this. The nervous system is the master system of the body. It controls and coordinates everything. Interference to this master system causes dis-ease in the body, ultimately leading to illness if left unresolved. 
The role of the doctor of chiropractic is to analyze, detect, and remove these nerve system interferences, thus allowing normal function to return to the body. That was my first exposure to the principle of chiropractic. And coming from an electrical engineering background, it kind of just spoke to me. It just spoke to me. And a, like a light bulb, it was immediate. I said, that's my life. And the principle is what turned me on to chiropractic. So off to chiropractic school I went. I ended up at Los Angeles College of Chiropractic, like many of the philosophy guys in our group, like Billy D and Dave Jackson and a lot of guys I know that went there. I was just there, actually on campus, just a few weeks ago. 